thanks for joining me here for the next 15 minutes. My uh, real aim for the next 15 minutes is that you get three good insights for you and your team members to work on. Uh, these are some actionable tips. And uh, the, I'm, today I'll be talking about reward programs for subscriber retention. So the acquisition folks did a great job acquiring you and my job is to retain you after a heavy lunch. Um, so a little bit about me, um, you know, I work with subscription apps. Uh, you know, most of the apps currently uh, fail to effectively engage and monetize their user base. Uh, and I sort of try and come and work with their product CRM growth teams uh, to help them to get to business impact via customer engagement tools um, quickly and reliably. Uh, my wife likes to say that the only reason I have a podcast is because uh, she's fed up of me and I need people to talk to uh, CRM about. So uh, do check it out. It's called LTV Talks. <coughs> Just before we get started, uh, these are the real heroes behind the projects that I, I speak about today. Uh, how many of you in the room, by the way, know Blacklane? Okay, one or two. Uh, what about Blinkist? Definitely a lot more. Okay, so Blacklane is a chauffeur, uh, glo pre global premium chauffeur service. Um, so a fancier Uber. And uh, basically what they do is they have been in the business for the last 12 years or so. And uh, more than 50 plus countries, more than 300 plus employees. Uh, and their job is to provide you a premium chauffeur service than what you would normally get. Um, Blinkist is a non-fiction uh, summary app. So it summarizes all the good books for you in less than 15 minutes. Um, both the Ionas there that you see are the reasons uh, why Blacklane was a project success. Uh, they got me in before they knew the, what they wanted to do with subscriber retention. And I sort of came in uh, you know, at the ideation stage and started working with them on what a reward program could look like, what benefits they might get out of it, and things like that. Uh, whereas for Blinkist, uh, Matt Dyson, who is the uh, you know director of CRM there, got me in, and uh, they already had a plan of what they wanted to do with the rewards program, and I sort of came in and helped them get to that final stage uh, quickly and reliably. So uh, and Josie, very talented CRM person who was the operational uh, reason behind whatever we achieved. So I kind of misled you, right? So 300% user engagement uh, is true, and we'll come to that. But I'm not going to do and uh, show you like three ways in which uh, you know we went about doing these case studies. Uh, more importantly, I'm going to give you three key observations that I've had in the last two years working with over 20 subscription apps. And uh, the idea is to give you these observations because I don't see many apps noticing these, and I feel like they can unlock a lot of uh, value for your subscribers and for your business. So the first one is that subscription is a promise of value creation. And most apps that I speak to, uh, and I speak to a lot of apps, whenever I ask them what a subscription is, most often the, the reason or the, you know, the answer I get is it's a recurring revenue model. And oftentimes, I think we forget that for a customer, it's a recurring expense that uh, they are trying to make uh, for constant uh, promise of value uh, from your app, right? So you need to be really solving uh, a problem for them. And as soon as you're providing more and more value to them, uh, chances are they will stick with you. But it's hard to do that. So reward programs can be a source of parallel value. And let me show you with, an, uh, with a quick example. So how many of you have seen Tazos before? Anyone? OK, Kirill, nice. Uh, so when I was a kid, this was quite a rage in India. And we used to get these Tazos with a packet of chips. And we used to play with them uh, with friends and you know, during recess and you know, whatever. Any free time we got, we were playing with these. And we would fight uh, with these Tazos. Uh, and the important thing is that this thing you got with a packet of chips. You didn't even get it. Like This was not the source of value creation for a chip company. But this was a reward program, right? And I don't remember in my childhood ever buying any other packet of chips but this one, just because I could get my hands on another Tazos uh, and show it off to, uh, you know, to my friends. And that's what I mean, right? This is an extreme example of a reward mechanism. Uh, but that's what uh, it's at stake, right? Like You can create these parallel value streams for your users by having something like that. 
Uh, whenever I talk to clients, by the way, like, you know, well, as soon as I say reward mechanisms, people go to badges and that's like the most common one. But there's definitely a lot of things you can do, right? Like if you're a health and fitness app, uh, can you schedule a one hour appointment with a nutritionist if you win a certain contest? That's a reward mechanism, right? That adds a additional value for their users. Uh, so that's what I want to show. And uh, to that point, the first case study is with Blacklane. So Blacklane is not a subscription product, right? For their chauffeurs, uh, it's, a, it's a source of their livelihood. And what I mean is like, you know, all these cab drivers or chauffeurs would uh, rely on their livelihood for uh, with services like Blacklane. And that's why in the value sense of things, it's still a subscription because they get constant value out of it. And if you've been in a cab, which I'm guessing you have if you're here, um, you know, it's very common for them to have multiple apps at the same time. So you would see them scrolling on the app and finding the best price that they can uh, for the next ride. And they would take uh, the next ride. They don't care if it's an Uber or if it's Blacklane or whatever, right? And so the Blacklane team came with a bet. They said, let's launch a rewards program. Let's see what happens. Can we give a slight edge to our chauffeurs, uh, you know, for choosing us over the competitors? And this was like, a, this was a bet, right? Typically with reward programs, you don't have any underlying data. You don't have any sort of uh, supporting data that can make your case um, validate or validate your case, sorry. So that's how it started. And uh, one thing uh, that's important to note here is that the journey of creating a reward program like this uh, has a lot of stakeholder involvement, right? So don't expect it to be a very easy journey. Um, what we did here is uh, a bit of context, by the way, like for Blacklane and every other ride-hailing app, there was a lot of built-up demand after COVID, right? So there were a lot of people who wanted to take rides, uh, but you know there were not enough chauffeurs to sort of serve the ride base, right? So all the apps were competing quite aggressively and they couldn't acquire all these chauffeurs um, as soon as they wanted to. So the idea was to get more out of each chauffeur and to increase ride acceptance rate, uh, which we did by reward program. Uh, it resulted in 43% uh, improvement in ride acceptance rate. And if you look at email engagement or just like, I know that's a leading metric, not very reliable, but if you looked at any other engagement touch point, uh, we saw a 10 to 15% increase in engagement with everything we had to say, uh, which gave us a good sign that people wanted to listen to uh, these kind of communications and they wanted to know how their rewards uh, were functioning. One thing I uh, left out here is that this was completely built via CRM. There was no product natively built rewards program in the app. So this was done entirely through uh, piecing together communication channels and uh, with no product involvement or wo with no native product experience. So you can get gains like those, but subscriber retention is tough. So my argument to you is that you need to work on subscriber retention. Uh, and there are some good reasons why. So if you look at uh, the dynamics of the industry, more and more people are getting more subscriptions, which is great. But more and more apps are also entering the ecosystem, which makes it a very crowded space. Uh, so if you go into a health and fitness niche, there are about 100 apps that might help you to get fitter. And uh, how do you compete with these apps is getting tougher by the day. And so I would argue that a reward mechanism or a parallel value stream can help you get ahead of the curve. And if you look at this is reflected in different uh, bunch of things, right? Like if you look at customer acquisition costs, they have gone up in the last five years uh, by 60%. Uh, someone tells me that it's not as high as 60, but like may maybe around 30 or 60, depending on where you are. And uh, if you look at majority of the apps, what's happening is only five people after, you know, out of 100 people who you pay so much to acquire, pay you even a single dollar. That's crazy, right? only five. And if you look at uh, the people who pay you again for a second term, that's around two people. So, and that's, of course, that's industry average that depends on trial length, uh, you know, and all bunch of things, but that's a good average to pay after. And that's where uh, I think retention becomes even more, more and more important. And you need to find constant value creators. Now the question is, okay, if this is all so tough and there is already a way to achieve good results, why are people not making these reward mechanisms, right? Like, why are people not working on this? 
And the answer is like, have you seen a product backlog for any any per, as any team, right? Like that's you can't prioritize this stuff. So product teams are busy building important features for your app, and it's very tough to prioritize uh, a gamification or a rewards program. And typically, it involves a lot of effort without knowing what you will gain out of it. And in our data-oriented industry, it's very tough to get these things going, right? So that's where I want to pitch customer engagement or CRM tools to you uh, because these tools are getting very powerful and I see most subscription apps not utilizing them to their fullest extent. And I feel there, there's a lot of scope uh, that is left on the table. And if you can go you know, capitalize on that, uh, then you can definitely get ahead of your competitors, uh, either in the way you engage with your customers or in the way you retain them. Just a quick snapshot, right? Like CRM possibilities have increased drastically. Uh, most apps still do email, push notifications, and uh, don't go uh, further than that. But there is so much more that's uh, that's are that are available that you can reach out to people with in-product channels uh, like in-app messaging or content cards if you've used Brace before, um, but also out-of-product channels, right? Like SMS, WhatsApp. Um, so you can really piece together a lot of things uh, with these kind of CRM platforms, and I encourage you to uh, definitely check them out. These can be very good testing grounds for innovative ideas. So if you have a reward mechanism or any other sort of idea that you want to test, these can serve as the backbone of the company and produce very quick results for your product teams to learn out of, right? You can understand which type of messaging works. You don't need to build everything from scratch. You can pull out stuff very quickly. So it really helps you to iterate and speed up your testing. Um, it does need cross team support. So please don't go to your CRM teams and ask uh, for this to happen uh, next week. Uh, you know, people will kill me or uh, criticize me. This is the case study from Blinkist. Again, something we did only via the CRM tool. They were using Brace. Um, we did uh, a rewards program for uh, for premium subscribers. And if you are into the reading market, you probably know what I'm talking about, right? Like you read a few books. After a few months, no one's even touching any books. So it works the same way with summary apps. <laughs> And so after three months into a year-long subscription, uh, most users are passively looking at Blinkist or you know, not even uh, caring to, uh, to read anything. And so what happens is you kind of expect them to not be retained after one year. And all brands have this conversion-first mindset where they're not even looking at these things. Uh, Blinkist was ahead of the curve, I think. And they went with this reward program, which, uh, you know, which sort of capitalized on different behavior. My favorite was the night owl badge that you see here, which is if you read a summary between 12 a.m. and 6 a.m., you would get a night owl badge, uh, which was, you know, because you're a night owl. Um, and what we saw was a 75% increase in meaningful engagement. And meaningful engagement is uh, reading X amount of books in one month. It's a very high number, uh, something that Blinkist knew would lead to higher uh, subscriber retention. And then if you just look at uh, engagement, which is, reading a book in, in one month, uh, that was up by 300%. So there are very big gains uh, that are to be had. Uh, I would encourage you to all think about subscriptions as uh, value streams, you know, and try to find these parallel value streams or value stream enhancers to, to your product. Uh, it is tough, so act quickly. You know, the industry doesn't wait. There are some niches which are, uh, uh, which are still to be capitalized, and I think uh, these could be good ways to do it. And uh, use CRM, you know, uh, and I'm not just saying that because it's uh, my line of work. I think it's very important, and I think you should definitely look into it uh, because most apps aren't. Finally, uh, I run a bunch of uh, things like workshops and sessions uh, on, you know, like these kind of best practices and how you can you get out more out of CRM. Uh, so this is CRM operating system for subscription apps. I'm doing a one hour session uh, on October 11th where you or your teammates could join in and, uh, and have a look. It's priced, so you know you have to pay a cost, but whatever you pay uh, will be donated to uh, support child education in India. Uh, so yeah, that's it. Uh, thank you so much. Okay, then.